Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, we bring in a one-up mushroom to leave it on teacher's desk. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great. The uh, the cold open got me thinking yeah. about uh, going to school mm-hmm. and in elementary school. Like, Hey, being... it's it's back to school time, That's baby. Right. It's in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, the 100 degree air. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot in Los Angeles. It's hot. <laughs> uh, Patrick, how much of a teacher's pet were you... Would you say, like, on a scale from, like, teacher's pet to right. rebel without a cause? Uh, well... In so, elementary school. Right. Oh, in elementary school. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, and I've expressed this before on multiple podcasts, in Sunday school, I was a rebel without a cause. Uh-huh. Uh, always, confirmation classes, always rebel without a cause. <laughs> Sitting on the teacher's desk, whatever. I didn't care. Um, but in elementary school... Kind of depend on how I depend on how I felt about the teacher. Like mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. I would I would be a real brown noser, but I would say like not that much. I kind of valued being a class clown a little bit more. Oh, interesting. I was I was I was a total brown noser. Yeah, I was like I remember being in first grade. So we had a card pull system for like um, discipline. Did you have anything like that? No. For so you had like a little slot with like your card. Yeah. Or something? So, okay. so basically, the way it worked was that um, it was name on boards for us. Na- write your name on the board and then like checks next to it. Oh yeah. yeah. In in first grade, we didn't we didn't do that. What we had was like everybody had a little pocket that had yeah uh, different colored cards in them, and everybody start. You were on green. And then, mm. you know, if you needed to go pull your card, it would go, like, yellow, then maybe orange, and then, like, red. And right. I can't really remember what the consequences were of having to do that. Well, because you were such a good boy that well, you never had to I, move your card. But I remember one time in first grade, I can't remember what I got in trouble for. Probably being charming. Too charming. Oh, my but, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I had to. Did the microphone pick up my eye roll? <laughs> <laughs> but I had to, I had to pu- pull my card, yeah. and I lost it. Like I like broke down, like sobbing. Like it was like it was, like the teacher. I think was embarrassed for me for right. how big of a deal it was to me. I to get like a minor infraction. I, I, I man. Teachers at a certain level must just become immune to like secondhand embarrassment, right? <laughs> because they must witness so much embarrassing stuff. For sure, yeah, yeah. Maybe I, teachers at all levels, pr- probably. <laughs> I think that's probably true. Right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, no, I mean, like, I I would uh, occasionally get like in trouble on like the playground, or like I would be like talking to my friends during class or whatever. I wasn't a bad kid, um, but like. The scenario that we're describing or hinting at in the cold open of, like, leaving an apple for the teacher, like, never in a million years would I do that. Yeah, I wonder, where did that, where do you think that came from? Great question. Is there any way to know? Not on this podcast. Not on this podcast. We ask a lot of questions, but rarely do we know the answer. Uh, If you would like to hear us pose questions to which we have no answers, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Cartridge Society, where if you are supporting us at the 8 or 16-bit levels, you get access to, at this point, uh, NCS Arcade and other uh, miniseries that we've been doing uh, as we have done this for like almost two years now. I think a little... Coming up on two years. I think like a year and a half. A year, like and a year eight and a half, months. I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're uh, uh, in season two of NCS Arcade right now. We just released an episode on Elite Beat Agents, and we're going to be playing Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow for September. But like Patrick was saying, if you subscribe at the 8 or 16-bit level, you get a back catalog of other miniseries we've done, including mm-hmm. NCS Detective Club, um, NCS Goes Broadway, and now NCS Arcade. 
Yep. Uh, and if you have any thoughts or reactions uh, to our thoughts and reactions to uh, Elite Beat Agents, uh, you can email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com with those stories, those memories, those uh, questions, uh, and we will incorporate them into a listener feedback episode that goes live on Patreon to everyone who's following us, whether they are spending money on it or not. Um, so uh, get those questions in. Uh, we think we're going to be recording it sometime next week. So get those uh, emails into us sooner rather than later. Uh, and then if you're not in the Discord, you should be. Email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com. And we will let you in there where people are talking about Nintendo um, all the time. Uh, all right, Mark, should we get into the topic at hand? Should we start grading the switches, the switch on its like franchise? Well, I'm going to play the uh, transition music and then we'll discuss. It's report card time. Yep, that's right. It feels like it's the end of the year, right? Uh, the Switch has got senioritis. It's skipping class. It's showing up late. It doesn't care anymore. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's not that the Switch is dead. No. Because it's not. Nope. It still has to take, like, finals, exactly. but, you know, whatever. But it definitely feels like a, a chapter is ending in the grand book that is mm. Nintendo's life yeah how many other analogies can we use <laughs> to describe this thing that we're doing which is also like an analogy yeah. <laughs> but yes what we're going to be doing mm -hmm. is uh taking stock of nintendo franchises and how they've performed on switch yes not sales wise no 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 not no. critically uh, although those things may come into play mm -hmm. right uh, and for the for the purposes here mark and i are going to be acting as co-teachers uh so we are uh grading all of the franchises we made a list uh and so we're going to uh, approach the franchise we're going to discuss its performance on the switch how well it is represented what grade we think it deserves and then we are going to render a verdict now when we do these kinds of uh when we do like ranking things into tiers uh there is uh sometimes a question about like how low the bottom goes um, and how high the, the the ceiling is. So there's no S grade here. These are like school grades, right? Yeah, standard American school grades. So you can go from an A plus to an F minus. Uh, do we think even F minus or just like F is failing is F is failing? F is failing. Yeah, there are no modifications to the F. Fair. Right? Yeah. Because, like, why would you give someone an F plus? They <laughs> failed or they didn't, right? That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, with the end, uh, uh, I think we should uh, in invoke sort of our classic rules that uh, we, uh, all of these grades must be unanimous. Yeah. Um, and we must come to an agreement. And um, we will be friends when all this is over. For sure. Even if, like, we are in wild disagreement about how a, a series has performed on Switch. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and uh, I, I, uh, as we approach this, I just want to pose a, a, a question to start off with. Are we thinking about this in terms of, you don't have to necessarily answer now, mm -hmm. but just maybe as we're going. Something to think about. Um, are we comparing it? Is, like, the rubric or, like, the standard, the sort of, like, average of the previous nintendo consoles are we measuring it against other nintendo generations or are we just sort of like taking it on its own merit doing kind of a gut check and being like you did a good job you did a bad job my guess yeah is that it's going to be a mix of both right i think there will be some grading against previous generations mm -hmm. but then i also think um it'll have to stand on some of them will have to stand on their own two feet yeah and also for the purposes of these grades, we are taking into consideration games that are on Nintendo Switch Online, correct? Yep, that's right. But also, like, I think that's just going to count for less, right, than a new entry in a series. Yeah. Uh, probably. We'll find out. We don't know how this is going to go. Nope. We haven't recorded it yet. But we are excited <laughs> to launch into it now with our first fran... Oh, this is a two-part episode um, because we broke it down. We saw we had 45 franchises and we were like, we talked about each one for a minute. Uh, it's an hour long. We're going to talk way more. So uh, the, the, we're going to do half of them this week and then the other half 
next week. Uh, Mark, we are starting right now with Luigi's Mansion. You know, ask, if you had asked me in April if how Luigi's Mansion had done, I think my answer would have been very different than after I played and really enjoyed Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Yes. So, I mean, one thing to keep in mind here is that Luigi's Mansion 3 is seen as like a high watermark for the series, right? Um, it's the thing that, uh, maybe not the game that made Nintendo buy next level games, um, but like they put that game out, it performed incredibly well, and then Nintendo was like, you know what? You're a first party studio now, um, which is cool. Like that speaks volumes about like the quality and impact of Luigi's Mansion 3. You and I both really loving Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is like a thing that kind of like kicks it into the stratosphere for me a little bit. And I think that Luigi's Mansion 3, in some ways, I mean, the series, let's take stock of the series before Luigi's Mansion 3. Sure. There was Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube, right. which um, when it came out, everybody was kind of like, huh. You know, it's not that it reviewed poorly, but right. Nintendo had never launched a console without a mainline Mario title. Right. And so to have this kind of weird spin-off thing, like Luigi's Mansion was w liked, but it, I don't yes. know that it was revered. It wasn't a top-tier Nintendo franchise. I mean, I would almost borderline say that it was like soft despised at launch, right? Like the people who played it and like got into it liked it and could appreciate it for for what it was, but like it's the role that it occupied in that space when it came out was like not cutting it right it is really uh, it's revisionist history to be like luigi's mansion was a hit um it wasn't um uh people have come around to it especially as like the series has evolved as like oh yeah this is a perfectly fine entry point into a new new series a new franchise that hadn't existed yet so like you know, maybe uh, they people just weren't ready for it yet, or or whatever. But so Luigi's Mansion One has its own occupies its own kind of like weird space, right? And then we waited a decade, yep, for Luigi's Mansion Two: Dark Moon to show up on Nintendo 3DS, and that un like again, well received, but kind of the exact has, same thing has its like I think. you know detractors uh -huh. compared to the first one because it's broken up into like even individual mansions they like kick you out after achieving a like one of the big goals um something that i really liked in the re-release of it on switch and then we wait another eight or so years well there's the remake of luigi's mansion one right, also on, on 3ds nintendo, on nintendo 3ds at the end of nintendo 3ds's life right um but it did bring Luigi into our lives that's right uh, the first appearance of Guiji, a time traveler. And then, you know, it's not until 2019 that we get Luigi's Mansion 3. And that game sells insanely well. I think it sold like 15 million yeah. copies or yes. something like that. And so significantly more than Luigi's Mansion or Luigi's Mansion 2 did in their original releases. And so it brings the franchise to just another level of prestige yes in well, nintendo franchises and like i mean i, I know that the, on, on 3ds we had luigi's mansion 2 and then luigi's mansion 1 remake uh and it's interesting to see that we got luigi's mansion 3 and then luigi's mansion 2 remake but i feel like the switch made the entirety of the series more relevant in a way that the 3ds didn't really right like the luigi's mansion 1 remake was like fine and fun and whatever but it's not uh it, it, it wasn't like a cultural moment in the same way that three was yeah and i think three um you know it reviewed very well has yep a real uh very strong reputation but it definitely benefited from the switch bump totally that yes. many but not all nintendo franchises have received and so you know like that, the 3ds was a successful system, mm -hmm. but coming off of the Nintendo DS, it, you know, it was a little bit of a speed bump comparatively, Yeah, but they've sold so many Switches, yes. and Luigi's Mansion 3 has done so well 
It sold very well when it launched. It's one of those like evergreen titles that like every year they're selling copies of it. Um, and it's part of that uh, sort of magical Switch 2019, right? When like Fire Emblem came out and uh, Link's Awakening and uh, like Astral Chain and um, that other one that we were, oh no, Damon X Machina, maybe not, Never mind. Throw that one away. Astral Chain was really the one I was, I was, uh, I was reaching for. Um, but yeah, just that like, Nintendo had this like very exciting year, like two years into the the Switch. At some point, I want to rank years of the Switch. Ooh, that th yes, that's a great idea. Because just off the top of my head, I think that's number three. Just, j just, I think it was a good year. It was a good year. Um, all of this said, yeah. So, two games. We're talking two games. We're talking two games. Yeah. Um. And, and, and I feel like mm -hmm. we won't really see the impact of the success of Luigi's Mansion 3 until the, in the, until the future. Yeah. But on the Switch, a B plus? B plus is exactly where I was going to go to. It doesn't feel like it should get an A, even though like it includes the best entry in the series, or at least like the most like critically regarded one, um, and that has sold over 15 million copies. Uh, it still is kind of like... With this it has such potential to blow up like genuinely blow up on the next thing yeah i agree sorry i was just looking to see if i could find luigi's mansion 3 yeah it's has sold like 14 and a quarter million yeah. it is the like 15th best selling nintendo switch title right and if you could somehow extract pokemon games from that i'm sure it's in the top 10 <laughs> right um okay uh great luigi's mansion b plus well done luigi's mansion well done uh next up uh th this is our first sort of like cobbled together series that we're sort of describing as a casual multiplayer party game yeah, you know, um, so I think this includes one two switch and everybody one two switch. Uh huh. Plus, uh, clubhouse, Club, clubhouse games, fifty one worldwide classics. Mm -hmm. Uh, we play Nintendo Land. Yeah, this is a sort of uh, it's like obscenity. You know it when you see it, right? right? Um, hard to define, hard to nail down, but is like a game that you may pull out to be like, hey, family who's uh, not gonna have any patience to like look at Mario, um play this game with me uh and they they will be able to have fun yep um so um on and this is like a is a, a for a, a little bit like the cornerstone one of the cornerstones of like nintendo's like uh, approach to like l looping in new players right like especially on wii and one thing to call out here is like mario party is a distinct thing that we'll be talking about later yes it doesn't fall into this casual game category right. although there is definitely overlap totally in their goals and similarly uh like uh we sports not part of this we will that'll be its own category again later um so the the games that we have seen from this uh on switch are one two switch everybody one two switch and clubhouse games 51 worldwide classics that's a lot of games like a, a there's a big like representative size I worry for this, uh, for this franchise, as it were, um, that most of these games are not good. Yeah, I it's mean, well represented, but like outside of Fifty One Worldwide Classics, I'm kind of like, who wants to play them? But you, I have a different experience with uh, One Two Switch. Yeah, that's right, because my uh, nieces and nephew, they love this game. Yeah, I think it's one of the. Um, they have a Nintendo Switch, but it's one of the few games that they own for the system. And I gifted them everybody One Two Switch, right? Um, because they loved it One Two Switch so much. And I, f but I feel like One Two Switch, it it sold decently, and it benefited from being in this position of like right casual launch title party game that we've come to expect from Nintendo. It also, sort of just benefited from being like the only other game on store shelves with. Uh, Zelda for sure yeah yeah um and you know Clubhouse Games is a very respectable package totally but I neither one of them the Switch just wasn't the Wii you know right, right. In, in some ways it was able to uh benefit and from the success of the Wii 
and some of the learnings that Nintendo had, like Nintendo Switch Sports, is you know a good reinvention of something that they started on the Wii for the Nintendo Switch audience. Sure, but of the casual games, it doesn't didn't feel like anybody's heart was in it. I I agree with this, and especially when like you know there there's that whole. Uh, in, in the uh, DS generation, uh, the idea of touch generation games, right? That are like, no, no, these are these are the games like for casual players, um, and uh, just like the whole Wii ethos, a Wii Play in particular. Um, it just seems like those were all like either like statement or thesis, uh, like thesis statements for the platforms in a way that like it didn't even seem like one, two switch was that when it launched. Right. Um, and then was certainly never like received by the public as that. Um, so this may be one where like the ambition sort of like outstrips what was actually delivered. We did get three games. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking like C minus is, is where I am right now, but, uh, well, let me know where you I, are. I was thinking really just like middle down the road. C. Yeah. Because what are our, expectations for this like this what, is a good point what would be an a plus and i think for casual games like this it would be something like one two switch really having taken off sure you yeah. know like um like a uh, we keep talking around wii sports because we're doing wii sports later yes as it's like own sort of thing but um you but know like I, but that, that, but, that, but, but all, that would yeah. be the a plus would be I agree, yes. You know, and I think Nintendo Land would probably be a C plus? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well and I think this is worse than that. I think so too. Uh which is why I, I, I lean on the C minus. Yeah, I think I want you're it to right. be like flirting dangerously close to a D. You know what I mean? But I don't think it deserves a D just because it got three games. Because it got three games and also I think what it what it illustrates is that the audience for video games is so big now and that there are so many different types of games for ev anybody who wants to play a game yeah you know like there's right. something for you on switch and so i don't really know that this same audience exists as it existed in the wii era and that's what it seems like these games are cater are catering t to right you know right. yeah I, I I totally agree. So yeah, C minus. I like that. Uh, C minus. Um, next up, we've got Advance Wars. Now, Advance Wars, uh, not on Nintendo Switch Online, uh, and probably be or uh, plus expansion pack, right? Um, likely because they released this package of Advance Wars One Plus Two Reboot Camp, which is. A pretty good remake isn't totally right. Like, it's all graphically redone, but it's the exact same set of games um, as Advance Wars 1 and 2 from, from the GBA. But this is it, right? This is the only uh, game that uh, came to the Switch. It's a pretty good execution of itself, um, but got sort of buried by um, delays due to world events. Um, but even if it had launched when it was originally planned to, right after its first delay, mm -hmm. um, in like February or of twenty twenty two, these are impossible things <laughs> to know. Uh, but e even if it had happened then, it was never going to be a major blockbuster title. It would have been a real surprise, right. If it had been a major blockbuster right. title, and I suppose there's still time for them to reveal like a new Advance Wars game like coming out on uh uh yeah obviously we'll talk about things like this when we get to uh Famicom Detective Club um but like it just seems like that was a one and done thing they remade this game and like launched it to whatever reception it got and that's sort of it we're moving on collectively I honestly can't remember when we a few weeks months ago did an episode about Nintendo um, you know, go this pipeline of remake right. mm -hmm. to new entry. Did we talk about Advance Wars? I can't remember if we did, but I, it, but yeah, it, I don't know if we did. If we didn't, um, shame on us. It's a maybe could right. it, like maybe they that was the an attempt to see if uh, there was an audience for 
more advanced wars. Right, and it just doesn't seem like there was the, when the the you know partially because of the of the delay, but like I don't know when the game came out, it just kind of didn't li- leave a mark, right? But here's where I'm torn. Yeah, is that on the one hand, what expectations do we have for advanced wars? Like, it, I feel like it's not fair to adva- to grade advanced wars on the same rubric that we would get grade legend of zelda or mario or even like a luigi's mansion so is it an a because it showed up at all or is it like well it's definitely not an a because it showed up at all because it's a remake if it had been like an original entry in the series then if it's it was a and it's a great entry then maybe i see what you're saying but i guess my point is there have been generations where we've gotten no new or like no advance wars game at all and so the fact that there is, even if it's a remake, there is an entry, does that, is that a good, is that an A showing for Advance Wars? I don't think so. I think uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't B, think so. But what are, I, what are your mm, thoughts? I don't know. I, I, I may lean uh, worse than that. Because, like, this is a remake. It's not even, like, a, an original entry in the series, right? And, like, uh, it's a remake of the two games that were on GBA. There were two of these games that came out on GBA, right? Um, uh, Advance Wars, uh, Dual Strike on, on the DS, Battalion Wars on GameCube, um, and then there was another uh, DS one, Days of Ruin. Yeah, I mean, I guess we hadn't seen one on uh, Wii. No, uh, Battalion Wars 2 came out on, on Wii, so we hadn't seen one on Wii U or on 3DS. So it had been like a dormant series, but then like not really revived by doing a, a remake of two of them, especially when they have this, like in some ways I find it frustrating that they don't let you play the originals on the Game Boy Advance Nintendo Switch Online. But kind of stuck there in the same way that like a uh, Super Mario RPG um, uh, will nev- we'll make it so we can never play the original on NSO. Um, so I feel a little bit more in the C, ter- C territory for this one. But did you say B minus? Is that where you were? I said B, but like B minus I would go with. I feel like I, I feel like it's in some ways it's a surprise that it, it's very possible that Advance Wars would be like a no show. Yes, I right? agree with that. And so yes. the fact that it showed up at all is kind of surprising. But if it showed up at all, then we would just say either uh, we would either fa- we would fail it. Right. Or it may possibly incomplete. I don't know. Is is there room for incomplete here? No, not on this. Not on it, this. Okay. Not on this because it's actually... There's something here. There's something here. Okay. It showed up. It did the work. Maybe it didn't do the work well, but an incomplete and is it like... Didn't, it didn't do the work originally is, the, is, is my issue. Like, if this were a brand new game, I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. I think a B is justified. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I am not pushing too hard for it to get a B. Okay. Um. Or anywhere in like the B scale. Okay. Let, let's let's go C plus. Okay. Uh. All right. Next up, Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing obviously got like the is the best selling game on the nin- no second best selling game second best selling game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh. And it has the the DLC that is effectively a whole new game in Happy Home Paradise. Uh. It was a cultural moment. Um, I know there are like nits to pick about, um, uh, how it executed it, but like for my money, this was kind of a like perfect game at a, a horrible time. A. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no argument for me. Yeah. I, I think that totally makes sense. Um, what holds us back from giving it an A plus here? I'm, uh, maybe it is just those, well, the little nitpicks. Yeah. But I, honestly, I don't know that I yeah uh, n- have enough knowledge of the Animal Crossing series to speak intelligently to any of those. You know what I mean? Like, I've played yeah, games in the yeah. past, but I really enjoyed New Horizons. So I, I, I think where, and it's maybe even less about, like, comparing it to older games in, in, the, in the series for me, but just, like... You know, there's like the sort of annoying thing of like you open your island and then when someone visits your island, you have to wait and watch this animation of like their plane landing. And it's like, why is this happening? You know, like why, I get why they have to wait to load into my island, but why do I have to stop running around? You know what I mean? Um, that the it was very cool that there was a lot of uh, visiting islands uh, online in like, you know, 
We couldn't go to people's houses in uh, the real world, but we sure could go to each other's islands. I just wish there was less friction there. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, and the, uh, the happy home paradise thing. I also wish they found a way to just sell that separately. Because, uh, like, um, uh, Happy Home Designer on the 3DS was a, like, standalone game experience for, like, 20 bucks, where, like, they tested out that thing of, like, you can decorate rooms however you want. Um, and uh, it spoke to your uh, New Leaf um, game. So, like, it had interaction that way. And I'm just like, why didn't they also do that here? I think people who didn't buy the original Animal Crossing New Horizons uh, could have really enjoyed Happy Home Paradise. Yeah. I don't know that I, I, don't know that I share that, like... Uh, criticism That there? criticism of it. I think having it, like, the second best-selling Nintendo Switch game, having it be DLC that you could buy or you got for free if you have, like, plus expansion packs... Uh, that's a great point. ...versus charging people, you know, like, another 60 bucks or whatever to get a whole new experience. Um, I don't know if that would necessarily have made it better, but I, I also think that, I don't know that, I don't know that anything is going to get an A plus on. I think the... it's possible some do. There, there, there are some, I mean, two of the greatest games of all time came out in the Legend of Zelda series. <laughs> so like, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. Um, but uh, I think Animal Crossing get, gets a, a solid A. Yeah, yeah, great job. 97%. Should feel something. good. Yeah, should be proud. Yes. Um, next up, Bayonetta. Uh, so with the expectations of Bayonetta, yep. which have to be pretty mid. Sure. You know. Um, people like character action games. People at, like character action games. But right. Bayonetta on the Switch, you get... One ported, you get two ported, right? You get a whole new entry in three, you get a crazy spin off that expands the mm -hmm. world of the series. I don't know what, what more you could ask for. And if we were pushed right now to come up with a subtitle for that game, it's <laughs> Cereza the Lost Demon. Is that right? Maybe it's Cereza and the Lost Demon. Maybe it's Cereza and the Lost Demon. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, just like it's a uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, or is Raya the Last Dragon? Well, no, because I think in both cases, yeah, Raya and Cereza. They are the protagonists, and then it's and oh, we got it, and, Aqu dragon. and Aquafina, and, got it, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and the the la la lost demon is uh, played by Aquafina as well. It must be. <laughs> Why else would you use that title structure? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the only reason. Um, so so yeah. it's like, I mean, as far as Bayonetta goes, a series that it, plus she's in Smash. Um, yeah, great point. You know, and she was in Smash on Wii U as well. Yeah, but right. like as far as Bayonetta goes, I don't know what more. You could want if you're a Bayonetta fan. Yeah, this feels like an A to I me. I think it's an A. Uh, and, of course, Mark and I are not uh, big Bayonetta fans, so, like, what are you going to do? Yep. But, um, yeah, I think Bayonetta absolutely gets a an A there. Next up is Box Boy. Now, there aren't that many games in the Box Boy series. Started on 3DS. Box Boy. Bye-bye, uh, Box Boy. and uh, Box Boy Forever? Am I making that up? I think that's right. And then the one that came out on Switch is Box Boy and Box Girl. Um, so a whole new game in the series um, came out kind of early in the Switch's life, and then they never revisited it. So, like, credit for putting out a new game. Maybe, like, the series was already done at that point. I don't know. This feels like a C to me. C yeah. plus? I don't know. I think a C plus. I want to give it some amount of credit for yeah. showing up on Switch at all. Yeah, I, I do too. So maybe a B. Maybe a B minus. B minus it is. So a little bit better than Advance Wars. Yeah. Just noting that. Advance Wars C plus, Box Boy B minus. Do we feel good? I want to go back just real quick yeah. to Animal Crossing. Yes. We feel good about it being an A and, and not, not an A plus. An A plus. I just think that A plus, like A plus is like a perfect score, right? I think. Well, okay. Yeah. To to your point. Yeah. Like, kind of following the road that I think you're going down. Mm -hmm. If we talk about the Legend of Zelda, which we are not yet, but we you will. Know, we do have right. two of the greatest games of all time. Seismic changes for it. Animal Crossing: New Horizons. I would argue not a seismic change for the series. The reception of it was larger than it had ever been before. Right. Um. So yeah. Okay. A. A. a yes. A. It I didn't mean, I really changed the formula of Animal Crossing. 
that much. Right. It changed the chemistry of the audience. Yes. Um, but that is maybe not the game's doing, right? Yeah. That was possibly the pandemic's doing. Who knows? Or it was just time, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel good about uh, having it in A territory. That does mean that it got the same grade that Bayonetta did. But, you know, the expectations are different. I mean, you're grading writing, you're grading PE, you know, and health. Yes, like, that's right. Like, they're all getting the same letter grades. Right. But um, what, it, what success requires is different in each one. Yes. Okay, next category here. Next um, class? Are these classes? What are these? Yeah, these are classes. These are classes. Okay. Yeah. And Nintendo is the student. Yes. Okay, great. Um, is classic game repackaging slash retrospective. This is kind of a catch-all where we're putting, like, Game & Watch Gallery, Nintendo World Championships, NES Remix, uh, Super Mario All-Stars, and 3D All-Stars. These, like, collections, repackages of games, uh, or that try to represent them in, like, a new fashion. Um, so uh, what the Switch gave us, right, is Nintendo World Championships, NES Edition, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And then it gave us Nintendo Switch Online, which includes... Oh, that's which it, interesting. It, which is not really, uh, like, a packaging in the same way yeah. that 3D All-Stars is. No. But they do all exist that's on a good the Nintendo point. Switch. That's a good point. As part of the library. That's, I mean, that's more of, like, a philosophical approach to, uh, like, what is a classic yeah, game's let, let's keep it. Let's keep it to Nintendo sold this physically... Sure. At, okay. At some point. So uh, basically just 3D All-Stars and uh, NES Remix. Or yeah. no, sorry, not NES Remix. Nintendo World Championships. Yeah. So, I think so. <sighs> those are the two examples I can think of. Those are the two examples, yeah. Um, or Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. <laughs> um, no, no, no. That's not part of it. Um, okay, so what, what do you, what, how, how, are, how are you feeling about this? Because I do, like, I like... Nintendo World Championships, I think NES Remix is superior to it in basically every way. Um, I miss, I mean, I, I know we have one of the Game & Watch galleries on NSO, um, but I wish there was some other kind of uh, Game & Watch gallery on this thing. Yeah, Nintendo often does a really good job of repackaging its history and reselling it to us, something that we've yes. already bought. Yeah. And I agree with you. I thought that NES Remix was cute. Yes. Um, and I definitely bought Super Mario 3D All-Stars and was right. happy to be able to play those games again um, in a little bit of like a cleaned up form. But, but it's just an ever so slightly cleaned up form, right? Like, and, and without Galaxy 2. Like, I, you know, not, not to hold that over that uh, package's release forever, but I'm going to hold it over that package's release forever that Galaxy 2 is not a part of it. I would say that... It's a C? C. Mark's feeling C. Um, I think that's probably right. Man, you you uh, bringing up um, NSO as like a possible catch-all for that, especially considering that there are SP versions of a lot of the classic games that like put you into you know advanced win states to like experience the end of those games that you may not be able to do otherwise. Well, the reason why NSO feels different to me mm -hmm. than those and why it's so silly to say this, but the reality is like why I'm happy for Nintendo to resell me something that they've sold lots of times before is because when they do it well, they're repackaging it in a way that makes it feel like unique or special yeah. or of the moment. Yes. And, like, Nintendo Switch Online is not intended to do that. Nintendo Switch Online is intended to be a persistent library. Right. And not, like, a celebration of an anniversary or, like, right. something like that. Although it will frequently be used to, like, highlight a specific game or series, possibly for an anniversary or, you know, to promote, like, a, a new entry or something. Um, but, yeah, I think I think C is probably right for this. Um, if only they had ported over NES Remix, I might be feeling differently about this but they didn't um next up and look we don't have many joke uh classes on here but this one is codename steam <laughs> this is a sadly i think an incomplete uh i mean i think it's just an f right <laughs> so codename steam is a uh how a, can you grade it if it never showed up well okay 
I think you can because well, I mean, if you don't show up to a, a, a if you sign up for calculus, you never show up to a class. You're going to get an F unless you drop it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Kind of feels like maybe Nintendo just dropped this one. With good reason. With good reason. Uh, this is a 3DS tactical game. This um, is a class that was not well attended. Not well attended in the, in the first place. Couldn't justify its um, continued ex- but existence. But it's an intelligent systems game. Like, it's, uh, you know, an intelligent systems uh, strategy game. Seems like they, if, if they brought it back, there would be, like, some kind of fanfare for it. But, um, no, I mean, I, I'll make the argument for F here. Yeah, let's do it. Set, Codename Steam, our first F. Our first F. Uh, next up, Donkey Kong Country. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's have this heartbreaking conversation here. Well, is it Donkey Kong plus country? Like, do we count? Because we did say NSO games were up for grabs. Sure. And so you can play the original NES Donkey Kong Mm -hmm. ports Mm -hmm. on Nintendo Switch Online. And three. Uh Uh-huh. And junior math. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, plus, you have the entirety, You especially in January, you'll have the entirety of the Donkey Kong Country series right. on, on it. I feel like, but somehow it's, it's disappointing. Like, I almost want to yes. give this, look, I love Tropical Freeze. Yep. I was really excited that it got ported to I Switch. Loved I loved really, it on Wii U. <laughs> so, like, I'm very happy to been, have been able to play it on Switch, and I'm looking forward to Returns HD. But it maybe it maybe if we had never had those rumors in like 2020 sure. that a new Donkey Kong game was in the works and on the cusp of being announced or whatever, that I would feel differently. But it feels like there's a hole where a new Donkey Kong should be. Yes. And the fact that we've just gotten ports, I kind of want to give it a D. a D. That's I. I want to give it a D too, and not just for Donkey Kong, but uh, I also want to say that, like, while well, they've been good about bringing uh, some of those games to NSO, there's a big hole there too. We don't have Donkey Kong sixty four. Oh, we true. don't have Diddy Kong Racing, um, where it's just like, when we don't have any of the Donkey Kong Land games, which I'm less upset about because they're just like bad sort of versions of of the country games. But even still. They could be there, and they're not. Um, so, like, there's a hole in, like, the new release Donkey Kong lineup. There's a hole in the, um, like, classic game lineup. Um, and, like, big ones, too. We're not just talking about, like, DK King of Swing on Game Boy Advance, which they could release, right? right or, like, the port, the Donkey Kong Country ports that they made for the Game Boy Advance. Also that. Or, or you know, uh, the Jungle Beat. Um, you know, they did new play control for that on, on the Wii, uh, so you didn't need to play it with DK Bongos. Uh, you know, I'm just, like, there's, there's kind of a lot here where you're, like, they don't seem to be representing... Donkey Kong all that well. They trot them out every now and then when they're like, we need to fill a hole in our release calendar. We got nothing for January 2025. Uh, put out a Wii game that we also already put out on 3DS. Um, I think D is just where we got to go with this. It is D, possibly D for disappointing. It is disappointing. Now, the Switch isn't dead yet, so nope. it's possible that we could be surprised. But up to this point, yeah, I think I got to go, go D. Gotta go D. Uh, next up, Earthbound, the Mother series. Obviously, we have had no new entries in uh, the the uh, Earthbound series uh, on Switch. The um, Super NES game came out on Nintendo Switch Online, as did the um, NES game that uh, was you know uh, localized on the Wii U. Um, so we've got those two classic games re-released yep and i don't think anybody has any realistic expectations that mother three will right. like be localized or brought over um so i don't i struggle with this one because it's Me like too. well what more can could you expect than those two games you know showing up in nintendo switch online right but it does mean that like they didn't really do the the classwork, right? In 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 that way. This one feels like it this if we are to employ an incomplete now feels like a time to deploy incomplete. Well, why would this be and code codename steam be be an F? Uh-huh. Because there's nothing there. There's no codename steam at all. 
Oh, they did sure. zero, right? Um, that feels like an active fail. Whereas mother, it's like these are the obligatory ones we already did. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I do agree with that. I will say, like, I don't have any expectation that there would be another one, right? Which is where, to me, it's like, I don't know, a C. Sure. I, I, I'm I'm disappointed, but I expected to be disappointed. Like the thing that I expected to happen happened. Right. And it didn't do any more than that. It didn't do any worse than that. It, you know, did the bare minimum. <sighs> but can we really say that uh it is better represented on Switch than Donkey Kong Country? But again, we're not grading them against each other. These no, are all, you're right, you're these right. are all different. You're classes, right. mm-hmm. which means they're all going to have different rubrics. Right. This is, I mean, I, I, like the, my I expect, struggle with this my, one too. My expectations for Earthbound are very different than my expectations for Donkey Kong. So before we started recording, I said there may be some times where I want to uh, evoke the check, check plus, check minus system, right? Um, just to be like, did you do it? Did you do it well? Did you not do it? Uh-huh. And this may be a place where I'm like, it maybe just gets a check. It did what we expected it to. It didn't like leave those games off. They did include Earthbound Beginnings, that's right? right? Like Nintendo that's something. Was, Nintendo is almost like auditing the Earthbound class. Yes, they're not really. They're not there to right um, to excel at it. They're not really there to learn. It's not really part of uh, what they're trying to achieve. But they yeah. were checking it out. Yeah. So I. So this is where I will say that I think this one gets a check. Fair enough. Okay. Great. Next up, Excite Bike slash Truck, the Excite series. Hmm. Sort of not present, right? Right. I mean, we obviously have uh, Excite Bike on NSO versus Excite Bike as well, um, which is an interesting in- inclusion. And it has sixty four. And Excite Bike sixty four. Yeah. Um. But another one where there's like no new in no no new entries. Right. I don't know. Is this is this a D? Is this a, or or is this another check? Like this is about what we expect from. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to fall into the check check plus check minus system too frequently. This is just sort of two in a row where it seems like. Y- yeah, for like dormant series. Yeah, that, yeah. I think a check is appropriate. Okay, great. Speaking of dormant series, our next up is F Zero. Would be true if not for F Zero ninety nine, which is an interesting thing for them to do. Obviously, we got uh, F Zero on Nintendo Switch Online, uh, the F Zero X as well. Um, no kind of like port of uh, GT or um, uh, any of the. Or wait, the uh, is maximum velocity on one of the GBA games? Yeah, is, is on, on GBA. Yeah. Um, so three three classic ones plus. The new, like, 99 presentation, which, like, plays in those same waters. I don't know. I, I'm feeling a little bit more generous to this one, but still probably in the, like, C+. Plus oh, interesting. I, I would give it a B. A B? Yeah, because the fact that there is a new F-Zero game, that sure. it's, like, F-Zero 99, it is a new take on what F-Zero can be, but still retaining what people love about that series. I think that's a pretty good showing. I think it's a pretty good showing, but it's like for as much as F Zero ninety nine is a new game, it's not like there aren't any new tracks, right? There aren't any new uh, like racers or carts. Like it's all reusing all the old stuff, right? Um, uh, and maybe that'll uh, bite me in the butt when we start talking about uh, Mario Kart next week. <laughs> but um, I, I I just feel like that's a, a little bit of a strike again. So maybe like B minus. I, w- I'll, I will with that? compromise at a B minus. Okay, great. Uh, next up, Famicom Detective Club. I think this may be an easy A. In I fact, it may even be an A plus. With you. <laughs> it may even be yes. A, it may yes. even be our first A plus because I don't know what more you could ask from this series. Yeah, coming back from the dead, released uh-huh. for the first time ever outside of Japan. Getting a sequel all in the space of a single generation? Kind of insane. And, I mean, like, considering how much work was done on the first two games, uh, like, that's just nuts, right? Because they were originally, like, 8-bit uh, graphic presentations. And uh, they're, like, a fully anim Not fully animated, but, like, uh, a compellingly animated 
in an anime style um with beautiful music and uh the you know i was talking about like the ui and ux of uh, all three of those games on uh tuesday's episode uh yeah i i agree what a glow up what an unexpected inclusion uh on on the system and uh, an expansion of the franchise yeah i will i will agree a plus made with love those games are also, I just finished uh, M.E.O. The Smiling Man, uh, and, like, man, I just really loved it. I, I thought the storytelling in it was uh, great and super fun, and uh, I was c- compelled, like, all the way through to the end. Um, so, A+. Plus. Congratulations, Famicom Detective <laughs> Club, on getting our first A+. Plus. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Kind of a mixed bag here, don't you think? Yeah, I'm torn. I'm also torn, because... Fire Emblem Three Houses, big hit. Big hit was what I personally want from fam- from Fire Emblem going forward. Yep. Not necessarily what Fire Emblem wants to give me, but I really like Three Houses. Yes. And then you have Engage. Which is a game that I loved. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it took me a second to like get into it and sort of like recalibrate myself back away from the three houses like uh you know visiting the school between um uh battles uh kind of formula but uh i mean I, yeah they put out two really good games on switch including one that is like a uh franchise like exploder right that like drew in a new audience of people yeah but i feel like it feels like to me that Fire Emblem has lost the momentum that it had coming out of the 3DS generation. I agree with that. So, you know, it was like riding this high and coming out of Awakening and then Fates and then Three Houses, plus, you know, some of like um, Shadows of Valencia and like all that kind of stuff. Yep. The, the and that and they had Heroes on, uh, on the phone as well. Yeah. And then it feels like it's been squandered a little bit at the tail end here. I, yeah. You know, um, with quality of engage aside, I think it's fair to say it did not hit in the way that they were hoping for it to. Certainly not in the way the three houses did. Right. Yeah. Definitely not. Well, and it's such a weird like that the game is like a, uh, an intentional like acknowledgement of the franchise's thirty five year history, which is so bonkers to me because all they kept talking about in interviews was how they tried to make it approachable for new players. And it feels the opposite to me because it's so right, like nasal it's so, gazing. Yeah, it's gazing. so self-referential, right? Um, all of the emblems that you uh, Did I say nasal gave gazing, navel gazing. There is you what go. I meant there to you say. go. We got there. Uh, yes, I mean you're, you're you're right. It feels like a miscalculation um, for that to be the one that they thought was going to be the crowd pleaser. When it's like, yeah, I guess it pleased a very a much smaller crowd, right? Right. Um, but okay, so but then where where do we put this though? I want to uh ooh this it's C plus for me some high highs some but even if the game is good even right, if engage is right. good which I I won't argue against it just feels like squandered momentum and that's why that's what I think drags down the grade. Yeah, I mean, but three houses was so big, you know, I and know, both but- those games are good. Like I I, I feel like. It's, it's delivering on almost the same uh, volume as, uh, man. So, you know, there, there's always been, like, rumors of, like, a remake of, like, Genealogy of the Holy War or, like, one of the other Super Famicom games. Um, and if only one of those had come out, it would be on par with what the 3DS did. And I would say the 3DS for, uh, uh, for Fire Emblem would be an A+, right? Um, like reinvention and revigoration. By some tellings, it saved the series. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And so I like this feels so close to that, even if engage is like a little bit of a foot off the gas. See, I, I don't moment. agree. And again, not talking about quality of the games. I think that if you announce a new fire emblem today, like a, a brand new entry in the series, I don't know what the audience is for that anymore. I feel like it has shrunk again. I feel like it's losing momentum Mm. when if this was a, if this was a success, if this was a high grade, it would be building on that momentum. Not like having me question where the series goes from here again. So it's almost kind of like first semester gets an A. Yeah. Second semester gets a C. Yeah. 
So what is that? <laughs> or does it just get two grades? I think we have to be fair and we just have to grade it uh -huh. um, as a, a single entity. Okay. And I, I think it goes higher than C. I would say maybe B minus. Okay. Okay. Is that where we usually land on uncompromised picks is B minus? <laughs> we do have a handful of them. Uh, all right. Next up is the fitness franchise, which we are basically just uh, using like We Fit, We Fit Plus, obviously Ring Fit Adventure. I think this is an A. I think so too. I think it, uh, I mean, We Fit was <clears throat> huge, as is uh, evidenced by the fact that everyone has a We Fit balance board shoved under a couch somewhere. Um, but Ring Fit Adventure actually had people using it regularly returning to it all the time the game sold incredibly well um it is like a more i don't know just a more uh what what uh like it's a more complete version of what uh we fit was i also think it gets some points for being such a surprise hit yeah like i remember seeing the reveal for ring fit adventure and just thinking that it was super weird and not understanding it and then the pandemic hit and right. like going out of my way to track down a copy and then once you get it you're like oh this is really interesting and fun and funny in a way that we fit didn't try to be we fit had different goals right um and so i like that it's not it, it's kind of like the spirit of what they accomplished with we fit but a totally different flavor, a totally different feeling. Yeah, and sort of like within Ring Fit Adventure, you can play it by doing the <clears throat> ridiculous like RPG, or you can just sort of like take uh, like individual exercises and like workouts as they come and like get rid of the silliness. So it's almost two games in one um, that like you can engage with the dumb stuff or you can just do it the same way that like We Fit was, right? Do you think that... Nintendo is waiting to do a Ring Fit Adventure 2 for the Switch 2 and not, you know, like yes, their yeah. own s philosophy of not putting a sequel on the same system when you could just keep selling Ring Fit Adventure. Like, yeah. Why make a second one? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would think so. And I, I, I bet when they when they launch Switch 2, and it may even just be like, you know, Ring Fit Adventure Plus or, or, or Deluxe Edition or, or something like that. Um. But yeah, I, I, I expect that they will go back to that well pretty directly. Up next is the Hyrule and Fire Emblem Warrior series. So kind of the Muso games. Yeah. Um, well, and so uh, Hyrule Warriors, the first one, came out on Wii U first. Um, but then the rest of them are all like Switch. And uh, I guess the first Fire Emblem Warriors was a Switch and 3DS game uh, simultaneously. Or right around the same time, um, but I like the Switch really did uh, solidify those like Warriors games as like a specific uh, expansion of first franchises and then an expansion of specific games, which is a, a weird kind of turn for them to take, right? To be like Age of Calamity is an expansion of the Breath of the Wild mythos, just as Three Hopes is an expansion of the Three Houses mythos. I hadn't really considered that, but you're totally right. That they have one like all-encompassing entry, and yes. one game-specific entry, and then it has gone quiet as of late. Right. But successful in what they were attempting to do. A B plus? Sure. I, I, I like I like B plus or may, you know maybe just a flat B because like none of these games set the world on fire. Yeah, that's true. Right, like they're all interesting, mm -hmm. uh, and I mean possibly there's just a ceiling on like Muso games uh, that is like just like I think they cap at B. B is as good as they can do. Yeah. Next up, Kid Icarus. Not well represented on our boy the Switch. Really just. The original Kid Icarus on NSO. Yeah, I would, let's, I invoke the check minus. Check minus, okay. So yeah, did they even do the assignment at all? No, not really. Not really. You can't even put the second game, you can't put the Game Boy game on there? You can't put the Game Boy game on there, which is perhaps the most confusing part. I get that there are, uh, you know, 
struggles with putting um, uprising on this thing. It would require, you know, a massive like overhaul, uh, you know, to, to the point where it's almost like, why bother remaking it? Just make a sequel. Um, but they didn't do either. So I do think that the sequel, is it Gods and Monsters of Gods and Monsters? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Um, I do think it will show up eventually on Probably, NSO. Yeah. So I'm willing, you know, if they go back and they do the work that and that game shows up on NSO before the switch is over with, I would be willing to amend this to a check. But... As, as as would I, and hey, if they could also include the uh, 3D Classics version of Kid Icarus. Oh, that'd be amazing. That would be amazing. But they didn't. <laughs> they did not. Uh, all right, next up, Kirby. Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. Kirby, a lot of Kirby games on the Switch. A lot of Kirby games on the Switch. I want to give it a B plus. Okay. And Tell, it's buoyed yeah. for me by And the Forgotten Land. Right. Otherwise, I think Kirby did the work, and I would give it a B minus, a C plus, you know, no right. shade on Star Allies, um, or whatever the we Re- return to Dreamland, return deluxe. to Dreamland, uh huh. Um, but Kirby and the Forgotten hmm, Land, not saying the deluxe part for some reason. <laughs> Dream Buffet is also on there. Dream Buffet's on there. They have a, like a couple of fighting games, a puzzle, you know, like there's a, right. a number of those right. downloadable Kirby titles, and well represented on NSO. Well represented on NSO. But Kirby and the Forgotten Land, for me, is what ri- makes it rise above average. Because right. I, that game was a revelation for me in my appreciation of Kirby right. and what a Kirby game could be. And I I'm, I'm really hope that the next time we see an original, like, full Kirby game, it's an extension of what they started doing with uh, Forgotten Land. Yeah, okay, I, I, can, I can live with B+. Plus, B plus, I think, it? yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, not quite an A. Agreed. Because um, it's, it's another one where I'm like, well, maybe the ceiling on Kirby isn't A, right? right. Um, all right. Next up is Labo. Not quite sure how to grade this one. And it's not even that it burned short, but burned bright. Right. It just sort of like, it's maybe even faulty to think of it as a series, right? Um, they did the four different kits, uh, and then Game Builder Garage was sort of like an outcropping of that. Um, check. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. Really, I mean, this is also the I only really place where it exists, right? Where the series exists, and it's unlikely to continue. I agree. So yeah, in that way, it almost feels like a a, a squandering of of a potential there. But it's not really Nintendo's fault, you know. Like they, right? Like for what Labo is, I would say that the support they gave it was pretty good, and the fact that there wasn't an audience for it. That just is what it is. Right. Well, so I wonder here, there are other sets of of grading systems that we can invoke here. I wonder if this is a a class that they truly did audit. Is it pass fail? Mm, Yes. Yeah. I like that. Okay. And I think. I think it's a pass. I think we say pass. That they passed. Yep. It's not. Look, it didn't start something uh, really, but, uh, you know, it was successful in, in what it did. Next up is Mario Kart. Now, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is, in fact, a port remaster of Mario Kart 8. An enhanced port of Mario Kart 8 from from the Wii U. Um, But they did also include DLC that doubled the number of tracks in it. Most of those tracks appear elsewhere previously. Only a handful of new tracks uh, and those new tracks would eventually come to Mario Kart Tour as well. Um, but Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is also the best-selling game on the platform by a mile. I, I want to give this an A. Yeah. Um, now, let me ask you this. Uh-huh. Does the existence of Mario Kart uh, Live Home Circuit affect your grade at all? It doesn't. Okay, great. Does it affect your grade? I don't know. <laughs> this, so you, you think A and not A+. plus? I I think we have to dock it some amount of points for being a not wholly original entry. A not entry, wholly yeah. original entry. But ever, you know, like, A is nothing to sniff at. A is still an A. Do we want to give it an A minus just to really, like, let it know that we're <laughs> like, we know you're not an original game. You know, teachers do this sometimes. They do. It's not all just uh, a, a pure... Um, judgment just on the work. Yeah. Sometimes 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is just being a little brat and you need to take it down a peg. That's right. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're giving it a, a, a petty A-. minus. That's right. Okay, great. <laughs> Next up, Mario Party. Again, pretty well represented on uh, NSO. The first three games are on um, the Nintendo 64 library. And then we have two games on the system already, um, Super Mario Party and Mario Party Superstars. And, of course, Jamboree is coming out uh, by the end of this year. I would say as far as Mario Party goes, I would give this an A. I would give it an A, too. Also, Super Mario Party, uh, let's not discount how well that game sold. For a Mario Party game, it's out of this world. Yeah. It's an over 10 million seller as well. And I think we don't have to dwell on it too long because I don't know that either of us have much to say about Mario Party. But I think maybe the fact that I haven't been a, a huge consumer of the series over the years plays into this. Like, similar with Animal Crossing, I think yeah. people have complaints. Sure. But hard to knock how successful they've been on the system. So. Right. I also, and, you know, uh, who knows? T- time will uh, will bear this one out. But Jamboree feels like it is poised to be a really good execution of, of Mario Party um, with a lot of different options, a lot of different mini games, cool character selection, a lot of boards. I, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it seems to be addressing all of the various complaints about the two previous entries, which already seem to be addressing complaints about entries leading back to the Nintendo 64. So, yeah, I think Mario Party, I'm happy giving that an A. Mario RPGs. So, in here, we're doing uh, Mario RPG, the Mario and Luigi series, Paper Mario. It's all kind of bundled together into a single entity here. Yes, and this is a, a like, sort of mega franchise that has its ups and downs, right? Um, and some of those, I mean, I would say the downs are maybe more pronounced than the ups, right? Or at least, like, people get mad about those downs. <laughs> um, and the Switch has kind of been a home for ups for all of these. Yeah, I would, I would give this an A+. plus. Yeah. I mean, you have Origami King. Yep. Which I, I think is a fairly excellent entry right. in the Paper Mario franchise. If not a true return to form. But then you got a remake of Thousand Year Door. Right. Plus you got a remake of Mario RPG, Super Mario RPG, the one that started it all. Right. Which is like achingly faithful while also being like a, a new graphic presentation of all of it. You've got the original Paper Mario on Nintendo Switch Online. You've got a, a Superstar Saga also on Nintendo Switch Online. And we got Brothership coming out. Which yes. looks like it's going to be the, a good entry, a good in, like, entry the in Mario yes. and Luigi franchise. So I think this is an A+. Uh, I will agree with you on, on, on A+. I think Mario RPGs A+. have shown up on the Switch in a big way. Uh, this one does feel a little bit like a tentative A+, though, uh, depending on how well Brotherhood, like, fits the brief. We've been seeing some, like, uh, additional videos and stuff of it, uh, and it just looks like it. Every, everything we see of it is just like, oh, yeah, this is hitting it. Right? Yes, but you're right. We, uh, if Brothership, for some reason, turns out to be a real dog, right? This might drop a little bit, but right. uh, A plus for now. Yeah, I mean, a, a, at an A plus, you've got uh, you've got everywhere to drop, right? Next up, The Legend of Zelda, and this will be our final grade for this episode. Uh, a lot to love here. Uh, uh, so much to love. I would say the uh, including two of the greatest games of all time being released on the system first, right? Yeah, being having Breath of the Wild be a launch title. Yes. And have that experience be synonymous uh, with the Switch. You know, obviously, I think we're talking A territory. Yep. Tears of the Kingdom, an, a similarly incredible experience. Uh plus, oh, mm-hmm. let's not forget that you got Skyward Sword HD. You got Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening. We're getting Echoes of Wisdom, which we're also getting previews of that recently, and by all accounts, seems like it's going to be really exciting. And Nintendo Switch Online gives you access to The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, the uh, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening Original, both Oracle games, the Minish Cap, the uh, GBA version of uh, uh, Link to the Past with Four Swords Adventure, Oracle of Time, or uh, sorry, Ocarina of Time, and uh, Majora's Mask. The only real thing that I can say, like, you dropped the ball here, Switch, is that we don't have the HD remakes of Wind Waker and uh, Twilight Princess. It would, I mean, the Switch would be an incredible 
Zelda machine if those were on it. It sort of already is. I know, that's the <laughs> thing. It's like, yes, even though Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD didn't make it to Switch, I still think it's an A-plus showing. I, I think it's an A-plus showing, too, but I think it's an A-plus that was earned by, like, they got an A-minus and then did a ton of extra credit work, right? Like, there were still two assignments they didn't turn in, but all this extra credit work bumped it back up to an A-plus. I, I think it's just an A-plus. Yep. I agree. Uh, all right. The Legend of Zelda gets an A+. Plus. Do we want to review these real quick? Yes. Starting from the top, Luigi's Mansion with a B+. Plus. Uh, the 1-2 Switch sort of party game category gets a C-. Minus. Advance Wars, a C+. A C plus. Animal Crossing, a solid A. A respectable A. Bayonetta, hanging in there with an A. Uh, Box Boy, B-. Minus. Classic Games Repackaging, a C. Uh, of course, the only failing grade that we're giving out on uh, Codename Steam. Donkey Kong Country, a D. And that is a disappointment. We are disappointed in that D. Uh -huh. We know that Donkey Kong can do better. We know it can. Um, apply yourself, Donkey Kong. Uh, Earthbound gets a check. Excite series gets a check. Uh, F0, B minus. Famicom Detective Club, an A plus. Well done, Famicom Detective Club. Uh, Fire Emblem, a contentious B minus. But I think we landed somewhere that we're both slightly fine with uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a true compromise we both hate it <laughs> uh, the fitness series mostly ring fit adventure an a uh the warrior series uh hyrule and fire emblem warriors uh we gave a b kid icarus a check minus um kirby a b plus labo gets a pass <laughs> Uh, Mario Kart gets an A minus, a petty A minus. <laughs> We're not above being petty. Uh, <laughs> Mario Party gets an A. Uh, the Mario RPGs gets an A plus. And The Legend of Zelda gets an A plus. Wow. Okay, Mark, let's close this out. Interested to hear the listener reaction on this one. Uh, obviously, a lot of this is subjective, but, you know, write into us or be in the Discord. Uh, and uh, let us know what you think we got wrong, uh, and if there are any of these that we should have applied, check, check, plus, check, minus, uh, uh, grading scales, too, that, that we didn't. Um, all right, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Thank you so much to our 16-bit patrons, Connor McKay, Patrice Millette, and Kyle Seaborn. We appreciate you, and we appreciate everyone who is listening to this show right now or who supports us on uh, Patreon at, at all. Me saying right now like that made me like panic because I was not playing music, not ready to do that. Um, Anthony DeLuca made our logo. Our theme music is, pro is provided by Ape at Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apeatbetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you for listening.